Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we went for a hike outside Colony 6 and ran into Tyrea, the Bionite Order assassin that we fought back in the High Antia Tomb. We learned what her story was, and Melia inherited Yumea the First Consort's Imperial Staff. This time, now that we're back in the colony once more, we're going to be taking off in junks to head for the Bionis chest where Zanza is. Before we get going, though, I upgraded Colony 6's Commerce to level 5 a little while ago, and I was avoiding showing what was in the stores just because I couldn't afford to update my equipment even further, so I'd like to go over what kind of items you can pick up for the road ahead. I'm just going to skip over the first two shops. They absolutely suck. I bought nothing at them. There's only so many ways I can say the shops in Colony 6 suck. Plus, this is going to take a little while, even with me skipping over the first two. If you want to check them out for yourself, the first shop is the one I just walked up to, the second is where we bought the final cross art book last time we were here. Now, one thing I didn't note about the store last time we bought this final cross art book, when we leave, you're too much trouble, don't bother coming back. Wow, screw you too, lady. You know, we kind of single-handedly united the people of our two worlds. You want to go back to living on that rotting arm of a giant metal god of some sort? The all the mech on out there trying to kill you every day, not knowing if you'll live to see your next meal? Yeah, go ahead, be my guest. Okay, no. I'm not really looking for credit for doing all that, you know, that isn't really how a hero should be, so, you know, I won't say that. And, oh, where? Okay, seriously, I know where these shops are. Why can I not find any of them? I know there is one right here in one of these two stalls. Where is it? Of course, it's during the day. I get that it makes things more realistic if the stores are only open at certain times, but it really just should be 24 hours for the sake of convenience. Don't make me switch the clock wondering if I'm going crazy thinking there was a shop there. And it's odd because the shops are 24 hours in every area other than Colony 6. Yet another way that the shops suck. By the way, have I mentioned the shops also suck because these are one and two slot variants of not very good weapons? Quite frankly, all of the weapons here are negligible, all the armor is negligible, the drones here you can get the talent arts and better stats from other drones that we've already obtained, but there is one tab that is actually not too bad. The art books are actually quite decent. Uh, I picked up Spear Blade for Fior because I do like that, increased damage to the enemy is toppled. Uh, I also went for Second Gear, I like that one, haven't learned that one and I did buy it. Uh, no need for Magstorm because it's effective against Mechon. I don't really need Lock On with what I do. But yeah, this guy is slightly less useless. And thank you kindly, friends. Don't be shy. Wow! Polite people actually have good stock in their shops. They don't totally suck. Only kind of. But this little Nopon right here is who you actually want to shop with. She has some pretty good items that I have decided to pick up. Uh, not really so much in the way of weapons. I think I got, uh, no, I didn't even get anything for Fiora, I don't think, or did I? Yeah, I did get the Orca Daggers. I kind of preferred the block right there as well as the more defense. I'll explain why I wanted that later. Fiora's armor, however, is where it finally gets good. It finally justifies all of those rare resources and piles of money you've been throwing at a Tharon and Juju from near the start of your adventure. Speed 4 series gives aggro down 6. Haste 6, Agility up 6, another Agility up 6. Ether 4 series gives debuff resist 6, attack plus 6, meh, Ether up 6, and in the typical pattern, another Ether up 6. Attack 4 series gives Arts Heal 6. Imagine 750 HP recovered every time you use sword runs because it hits 10 times. Yeah. Attack Stability 6, absolutely useless to me because my auto attack damage is always 998 on what I currently have equipped, but hey, that might change as I get more weapons. Strength Up 6, and wait for it, another Strength Up 6. Power 4 series gives Aggro Up 6, Damage Heal 6, Good Footing 6, and Topple Resist 6. Personally, I feel like the Power Series has been pretty consistently the worst of the bunch. That's not to say that Fiora can't tank and those aren't good effects, it's just not usually how I play. I just personally think that she is a bit of a damage over time character and I usually outfit her like that. As for other things that you can buy for her, I'm um, just kind of ignoring these because again the armor for the other characters isn't really that great. But we have the Arty Drones, which give Shield Drones too. I don't believe we've seen that yet, even though it's pretty similar to Shield Drones. Might as well buy it just to show it off at some point. Uh, the Mitra Drones give Shield Drones 1, okay. Eden Drones give Gun Drones 2. 
And I guess that's it already. As for the art books, Air Fang, I wanted to buy that. Double Wind, you bet I want to buy that. One of my favorite arts. Shutdown, mm, I guess it's alright. No bonus effect from Mech on anymore, at least not often. I went for Speed Shift because you know that's like my favorite aura. And for the others, these are just kind of different auras that you can use. Power Drain might be good. Uh, I already did learn the art book for that though, so I did give it my stamp of approval for a while, but I just kind of prefer second gear for right now. But that is every single shop in Colony 6. I want to go ahead and revise the equipment on my characters now. Here's how the party's looking. Fun fact, all of the equipment that was revised outside of Fiora was entirely done with equipment we have gotten from recent side quests. If that doesn't say that the item shops here suck, I don't know what does. Everyone's looking pretty similar to what they were. Charles is a little bit hodgepodgey. Uh, Ryan, I decided to go with some more debuffs on him. I just kind of wanted Topple Plus to extend the duration of his topples and then break, uh, as well as weapon power to give him a chance of inflicting break and some auto attacks. Other than that, of course, I went for damage as well as a little bit of defense there with some unique equipment. Fiora, on the other hand, though, this is where things are really complicated. First off, she has really overdone it with that costume. Those of you that were wanting Fiora to put some more clothes on, um... All, not very many of you in the comments, based on what you guys have been saying. Uh, she finally did so. Um, still went with double attack, still went with uh, aggro down. I will say that it was very, very tempting to put the oriental glasses that Ricky has on her. Because initial tension 3 is definitely good on Fiora. Fantastic, because you can use final cross a lot sooner. But I had an initial tension 4 gem and just opted to go with that instead. Everything else, haste, agility, decided to make her a little bit more tanky with agility this time around. Um, I actually just realized I don't really have any damage raising ones, just initial tension being the closest thing to that, but I think it'll be good. And wow, Fiora is also the only one who is going to get arts leveled up in this round of spending my AP. So this is funny, I spent all my AP before even getting to second gear on the list. As for skill trees, Melia has maxed out Reticence. Wow, she really doesn't have much more to work on. I'll put her on Reliability, I guess, just because she's further away from maxing that out. We got our equipment, we got our arts, we got our skills, now for skill links. Um, this is the last thing that I want to do, and I understand that we have spent a lot of time in menus, read about six of the eight minutes this video has run for up to this point, so I am speeding this up just to kind of save us some time so we don't spend more time in menus than we need to. There is one thing I want to bring verbal attention to, and that is that some of the skills you see I'm equipping will raise character stats at nighttime only. This might seem arbitrary and not very good, but trust me on this, later on, fighting at nighttime is incredibly helpful. In fact, I would dare say there are certain things that are impossible unless you are fighting at nighttime. So even though it'll be a little bit before I totally see the rewards from that all the time, it's still really good. Either way, um, just enjoy the rest of my skill links, I guess, if you find that enjoyable. Um, you can pause, of course, just to see what I've equipped. That is all I want to do in the way of skill linking. And we got the achievement, Sharing the Knowledge. That was a lot of frickin' menus, no more of those for a while. With that done, there is another type of preparation I would like to do, and it is not Preparation H. In Under the Colony is a heart to heart in the ether mine. Now, you could have seen this a lot sooner than me, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you have. You just need purple affinity between Shulk and Charla to see this. I've personally gotten this before even being done at the ether mine on my first visit, yeah, that early. We have a Broken watch. Sounds like a very heartrending thing to have a heart to heart about, but let's just, let's, let's uh, I would say let's hear it out though, but you don't actually hear them talking in these, so oh uh, well. So Charla's looking for something. You okay, Charla? Aha! Found it! My pocket watch! And it's still in one piece, more or less. Well, it's a beautiful watch. I personally like pocket watches a lot. The design is so elaborate, I've never seen one like it. So this is yours. Yes, it was my father's. He gave it to me before he died. It's nice. But why was it here? I think I dropped it here when we evacuated the colony. A Tharon must have found it. I can tell he looked after it. Does it still work? 
No. From the looks of things, it stopped when I dropped it. I can fix it. If we could just get our hands on an ether battery, I could fix it. Really? That would be amazing, Shulk. I can fix anything, no problem. The people at Colony 9 were always coming to me to fix things. You're so kind, Shulk. You don't know how much this watch means to me. I'll never forget how happy I was when my father gave it to me. I can tell you cherish it. I hope I can make it work again. And if you need me to repair anything else, just ask. I'll let you know, Shulk. Thank you so much. I'm admittedly a little sad we didn't get to view that one a little bit sooner. While it's not one of my absolute favorite heart-to-hearts, I do think it works nicely with um, your first visit to the Aether Mine. how they're not really sure if Juju or Atharon are going to be okay. I think it fits in really nicely there, and it does kind of make me wish you could view heart-to-hearts on your first visit to Blazes. But with that done, back to Junks we go! That is every last bit of preparation I wanted to do before leaving for the Bionis chest. I know it was a lot, I know we spent a lot of time in menus, but I wanted to equip our characters to be the best they could be at their current levels. Now, stepping off toward Junks, we have a new NPC here that will only be there if you have completed Melancholy Tyrea, like we did last time. You may as made. What does she do? Well, if you walk a little bit away, she kind of messes with the number of polygons that can be on screen at a time because that shopkeeper up to the right just kind of uh, phases out of existence and then his shop icon glitches up a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but I think I'd like to talk to her and see just what she has to say beyond just glitching out the world. Hi. I was the one responsible for Lady Yumea during her incarceration. I, her maid, sat with her in the Tower of Investigation. I will never forget that night, the eve of the Bionis Awakening. For I heard a story that deeply affected me. Apparently Lady Tyrea was conceived at a clandestine ritual. Such rituals were customary to protect the pure Hyantia. It was not known at the time, but her father was half Homs. Yes, can you believe it? He was of mixed lineage! And when this was discovered, he was thrown out of their order. He has not been seen since. However, there is more. It was customary to remove the child from the Imperial line. However, Yumea, despite her duty to the order, gave birth to Tyrea. And even now, it is not clear why Yumea dared to defy the order. Straight after the Bionis awoke, Tyrea visited her mother. The two of them sat, and Yumea told her the story I tell you now. On that dreaded night, Yumea poured her heart out to her child. I believe I witnessed Yumea's dying words of love to Tyrea. Hi, Dad. Do you think that Yumea became a Telethia like the others? All I pray is that she found peace as she returned to the Bionis. I really wish more side quests had this much depth. I understand it would be a lot of hard work to make, you know, voice acted cutscenes and put that much depth into every side quest, but it's something I certainly hope will happen in Xenoblade Chronicles X. More importantly, though, Linata will have new things to say to you once Junks has arrived in Colony 6. If you'll. Why isn't she. How are you? There it goes. Zanza underestimates what we are capable of. That is our chance. Now all you need to do is. Sorry, I know it won't be easy. So close. I am near the answer to restoring Homs liberated from faces. I am only missing the final piece of the puzzle. I give my word that I will find the answer. For Fiora. Fiora doesn't seem to have much time left considering that her body lost its Monado. But, can't dwell on that for long. We need to go off to our battle. Everyone here has new things to say though. Just before he died, Egil changed back to how he once was. How he was when he was kind and adored by all. It was Shulk who returned him to his former self. Thank you. Hello. Preparations for travel to the Bionis interior are complete. Please inform my father when you are ready. I shall accompany you as Lady Maynith would have wished. And Atharon. Yes? It's starting to remind me of how the place used to look. Although it's not just a Homs colony anymore. At this rate, the colony will be better than it ever was. And lastly, is the great big bundle of village chief himself, Mikol. Their preparations are done. Our preparations are done. We are all ready to go to the Bionis interior. Let's fly. While we're on our way, making this clear right now so that there's no confusion, there are some objectives we are leaving unfinished until after the story comes to a conclusion. If an objective requires us to defeat a monster that is higher than level 80, I am saving it for another time. 
If an objective requires us to go to areas beyond this point, collect items there, and bring them back to, say, Colony 6, I'll be skipping that as well as not to break up the flow of things too much. Because so many side quests and other objectives require you to do one of those two things, I think this is the best way to go about it just so that we're not breaking up the flow too much, and so that we're not too overleveled. It's the inside of the Bionis. It looks quite different from when we entered via the marsh. The Bionis is regaining its biological functions. Must be because Zanza woke it up. Then we find Zanza and stop him. Like Ricky's little uh, what, adorable oh, randomness. What? <laughs> What's that achievement for? Wow, we're gonna break the tension. I bet it has something to do with Ricky learning a skill there, but oh well. Uh, so, welcome back to the Bionis interior. It has been a very long time since we last visited this place. Uh, junks will dock here. If you go back to Colony Six, it'll fly back with you. Ooh, that's like a black abyss over there. Wow. Those shops in Colony 6 uh, on the back of Junks will also travel here with you. Presumably they just stay outside on the bridge while it's flying. That's kind of dangerous. But what you want to do is go inside of Junks before you go onward. I'm curious. Does Lenata have anything new to say now that we're here? Nah, she doesn't. Ah, well, worth a shot. There is one person that has something new to say, and you definitely want to talk to them. Vinaya, specifically, has a side quest for us. Is the replica Monado to your satisfaction? There is something that I have not yet told you. There are five other prototypes in addition to the repl replica I gave you. Could you go into more detail? Yeah, if there was ever a time to say that. Wait, but Ricky thought she would know everything about everything. Not this time, Ricky. We just have to listen. I could make them if you had the time and necessary materials. What do you think? Would you like me to make them? We have Replica Monado 1. Please take these five designs. They are prototypes and may be somewhat difficult to wield. They must be used correctly. But once mastered, they are truly formidable weapons indeed. Then, Replica Monado 2. Replica Monado 3. Replica Monado 4. And Replica Monado 5. These all give pretty negligible amounts of experience for this point, but they all do different things. As you can see there, this replica Monado would transfer energy to defensive power. So, these are all different types of weapons that you can get for Shulk. Um, we actually already have quite a few of these items, or rather, we have one of them. <laughs> wow, I thought I was going to have a lot more than that. But, these quests can be tough to complete. There are some cases where you just need to defeat enemies that are like level 90 plus in order to get them. But there are some items that you are able to obtain right now for them. As of this point, we can complete Replica Monado 1 and Replica Monado 2. I can see some people thinking this might be a little weird that we're going to go take care of these right now, but there was no other time to accept them, and Shulk getting new weapons is kind of a huge deal. It's only happened three times in this entire 100-hour adventure so far, so yeah, you bet we're doing that. Over by the Silent Obelisk in Satoral Marsh, if you walk a little bit away, you'll be able to find the first enemy on our hit list. The Green Ferris. Now, I did just say that we were not going to be doing any side questing that would require us to beat anything above level 80. But that just it. You don't have to beat anything over level 80. Remember Ricky's yoink art? Well, you can steal items from any enemy that is within 10 levels of Ricky and then just run away and claim the item. How about we try it? Got an item on the first try? How about we try running? Didn't get it that time. Let's try again. Took three tries and I died as soon as I ran away from the fight, but I did get the Lucky Fang. Caterpile Silk is our second item and it can be traded for with everyone's favorite meme-spouting defense force soldier, Dorothy. Or if you don't have five-star affinity with Colony 9, the overtrade with Sylveon that you see below will work as well. Wow, we seriously didn't discover this place? I guess it didn't count in the middle of the fight. Uh, over by Row Oasis, you can find the Magnus Ardens, which, uh, tra which, uh, trade. Drop the third item, yeah, you can totally trade with wild creatures on Bionis. Specifically, they're up on top of the hill. You can see the waterfall in the Row Oasis right over there for a reference point. Got the Elder Beard. How exactly does Vinaya create a Monado out of a fang, some silk, and a beard? The same way that Juju builds houses out of Gogol horns, of course. She learned from the best. She will get to work immediately. Uh, 
I have finished. The Monado Rudra has been designed for attack stability. Its lightweight material narrow the range of the attack power. The damage is more focused, making it a reliable weapon. I hope this weapon gives you the strength and power to succeed. We obtain the Monado Rudra, and it sucks. Okay, I don't mean to be overly negative and say everything sucks this video, but understand my situation. On my first playthrough, I was not that good. I really had to eke out these materials to get these replica Monados, and before finishing the main story, I could only actually get one of them, which was Rudra. All it does is increase your minimum auto attack damage. Everything else is the same. That critical ratio is because of my gems, but I might as well equip it just to show what it looks like. There we go. Looks pretty much the same, just black. Um, I don't mean to sound super ungrateful considering they were able to make me a replica, but would it kill you to give me a little red paint? I don't think that would have been too much to ask. For Replica Monado 2, the first material you need is the Ocean Elixir of Life. I detailed how you get this from the Lexos and Colony 6 a few videos ago, and I already have an extra one of those, so I don't feel the need to go over it again. But for the second material, you want to go to Kamos Guidepost on Bionis Leg. Over by that guidepost, in the direction of Villiera Hill, you will find a Mount Torta. This is not what you want to hunt. Instead, you want to make it all rainy, and after you do that, over by the Mount Torta, if you just go under the hill, you will find Armored Rockwell. This level 82 unique monster has what you want. Alternatively, there are level 85 Tortas in Satoral Marsh that will drop the same thing, but I find this to be a little easier just because it's lower level. I somehow won that fight, and Fiora got a level up. I really didn't have that hard of a time, and what do you know, it only took me, what, seven and a half minutes to contradict myself saying I wouldn't beat anything over level 80? Damn. And it dropped a gold chest, it seems, like any unique monster would. We got, oh, level 10 art for second gear, in addition to the immortal moss we needed. Awesome! Or should I say, mawsome? And lastly, over in the Archaeology Center in Frontier Village, of all the Nopon to have a material necessary for this, Pachipa, this little tiny Nopon that we have never talked to before, will trade you what you need if you have five-star affinity with Central Bionis. Indeed, right there, the Quad Wing Treasure. The Hereupon was most useful to us in gathering these materials. We've gathered everything that we needed. Let's have Vinaya work on another one. As we've heard, all the replica Monados have different play styles, so this one... The Monado Agni provides a high block rate. It is made from hard materials for increased durability. Damage is somewhat unfocused, but block rate is greatly increased. Yeah, um, an elixir, some moss, and uh, whatever a Wing treasure is, definitely hard materials. For that, we get the Monado Agni. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that entails. So as you can see, the minimum auto attack damage is greatly lower than the Monado Rudra, but you get so much in the way of defenses. Honestly, I think I'm gonna go for it. Here's what it looks like, and what do you know? Only it took them three tries to finally spring for some red paint! That thing looks awesome! The red and gold, oh, I love it so much! We are all good here, I just moved my gems over that I had on Shulk in the first place, and we have no other business here on Junks, we are good to set out. Now, remember how I said a few videos ago that I greatly regretted inviting Yura to Colony 6? Well, if you don't invite Yura to Colony 6, he will actually trade the one difficult to obtain item there. Normally you would have to defeat a uh, Glorious Slavos level 97 on 3 Sage Summit in Valak Mountain, Unfortunately, the Monado can only change the future, not the past. Honestly glad I haven't had more mistakes like that, but we are back in the Bionis interior. The place that we went through at the end of Satoral Marsh? Yeah, this is that same place. It is a lot bigger than you think it is. How big? Well, that area that we went through after Satoral Marsh is all the way down there. Just when you thought you have seen all of this world? No. We now have inside the Bionis to go through, and it's that freaking huge. Much like the first time we went to Mekonis, the inside of the Bionis manages to feel otherworldly as well. Just all of this, I guess you'd call it cilia along the ground. Some biology major is probably like raging at me right now, but just how you have these different like cellular life forms that are just all around here. You have some telethia in here as well. It's just the enemies here are really unique and unlike anything we've seen before. 
We have an ether crystal deposit there, and as you saw, I picked up a bloodworm collectible. You know that really annoying page in the Collectipedia that you've been unable to complete all this time? No, not that one, the other one. Yeah, you can finally start making a dent in that because there's actually item orbs in these sections of the Bionis interior. There were not over by Satoral Marsh, so finally, the OCD in me will stop raging at that. Either way, we're exiting the first lung. Let's see just what lies ahead as we enter the main part of the Bionis interior. <laughs> you look well, your highness. That voice... It's Lorathea! Show yourself! Look at that! The heart of the Bionis! The pulsating life of Lord Zanza! Quit your yapping and show yourself! I await your highness here. There is something I wish to show you. Your friends are welcome to join you. That is, if they survive. <laughs> Lorithea, what are you planning? Forget her for now. We must push on to the heart. All right. I wondered how many episodes it would take to hit 100 hours playtime, now I know.